In this video, we will discuss how to close a case. The objectives of this session are to cover when to close a case, how to close a case, and how to reopen a case. When to close a case. It is important to make sure that we close cases when we have finished working on them. This is usually when no further action is required or you have transferred them to another organization or location or caseworker for the continued care and follow-up of that child or survivor. There are other reasons why cases might be closed and these should be outlined as per the SOPs in your operation. Examples of these would be durable solutions being found. Perhaps the person has not been reachable for a specific amount of time determined in your operation to be reason for closing a case. Relocation, transfer, withdrawn, it's resolved or completed, or in the case of a child, um, them aging out or death or any other reason that is outlined in your SOPs. If a case has been closed, it is possible to reopen that case instead of creating a new case. As you might remember, an individual is only allowed one open GBV or child protection case. So if you have closed a case, you can go ahead and reopen it rather than creating a new case. You want to do this if the protection issue for which the original case was opened still applies or is strongly related to the reason for reopening. Now we will look at how to close a case. When I go to close a case, I will need to locate the case that I'm looking for. Once I have found it, I will then begin to do the final review. So in this situation, we're going to pretend that this individual has disappeared for over three months and in our case management SOPs, once a case has been abandoned for three months, we then move the case to closed. So in a case where the person has been, has disappeared or died or you, it's a bit easier to close because you don't have to resolve everything. It is more a matter of just making sure that each of the pending actions is then moved to close. So what I would do is I'm going to cover then all of the aspects of my case. So I'm going to scroll down. So I go down to case and I look at my case status and currently it's at assessment. I'm going to move on to my other parts first. I'm going to go down to my BIA. My BIA is currently pending interview. I can't close my case until I have closed all of the pending activities. So I will go to BIA number and then I'm going to go to change status, my BIA. When I go to BIA status, I'm going to say BIA closed and it's going to say the date and I'm going to put today's date and then I'm going to say client has disappeared for more than three months. So I make it clear that I'm not closing this because everything was resolved, but just because of the, the situation. All right, and now I'm gonna go back to my child protection case and scroll down. And if there was a BID, then I would also go to the BID and I would do the same thing. I would go up to change update status and I would change that to closed. I would go to any intervention and I would click on them and I would go to referral. So this referral is closed. This referral, I will change status, closed. And so then there, these are your options. So you can action taken, withdrawn by sender, reviewer. So right now I would say withdrawn by sender because we are closing the case. And now I will scroll down again, or scroll down to this referral, and I will do the same. And now you'll see all of my referrals have been closed. I will scroll down. I have all my other case files, so the individual referrals, incidents, LP assessments. I would need to look down to make sure that all of these are also, everything is closed. And once I've reviewed everything and I see that it is all closed, I will then scroll back to the top and I will change process status. I will click on the ribbon to process status and I will click it to close. 
plus prisons. Not reachable. And now when I click on this case, you see that the case status is closed. In some operations, it is necessary prior to closing, once you have done the first review, that you need to communicate with your supervisor to get their permission prior to closing. So if that is the case, then once you had done that review, you would then communicate with your supervisor and ask for them to review. And they would then do the review and then they would get back to you and say that if you can go ahead and close. Whether or not this is the case in your operation should be determined at the field level and can then be reflected in your SOPs. Now that this is closed, I am done. If I wanted to reopen this case, so that perhaps the person comes back next month and would like to continue with services, I can go ahead and reopen that. And what it would be is go to change process status and then I can activate it again. And then if I was to search for this case now, I would find that it's back to active and I can go ahead and change and create what I need. I would then want to write in reason for reopening. And save and close. And that is how you close and reopen a case.